Protein is a really important part of your diet, but figuring out how much to eat can be confusing. In this video, I'm looking at how much you should eat per day, what lifestyle factors influence those recommendations, and if there are any safety concerns. Proteins are the main building blocks of the human body. They are used to make muscles, tendons, organs, skin, enzymes, hormones, neurotransmitters, and various tiny molecules that serve important functions. Now, proteins are made out of smaller molecules called amino acids, which are linked together like beads on a string. Now, some can be produced by the body, while we must get the others from the diet. Now, as for how much to eat, there's vastly different opinions on how much protein we need. Most official organizations actually recommend a fairly modest protein intake. If you're at a healthy weight, you don't lift weights and you don't exercise much, then aiming for 0.36 to 0.6 grams per pound or 0.8 to 1.3 grams per kilogram is a reasonable estimate. This amounts to 56 to 91 grams per day for the average male and 46 to 75 grams per day for the average female. However, like I said, this is a very modest recommendation and there's actually a lot of benefits to eating more protein. So let's have a look at some factors that do require an increased protein intake. If you want to lose weight, as we know, in order to lose weight, we need to take in fewer calories than we burn. Eating protein can help with that by boosting your metabolic rate, or the calories out, and reducing your appetite, which is calories in. This is well supported by science. The biggest influence would certainly be with reducing calories in, as protein has the ability to reduce appetite and cause a spontaneous reduction in calorie intake. Uh, protein is just much more satiating than both fat and carbs. In this study, protein at 30% of calories caused people to automatically drop their calorie intake by 441 calories per day, which is a huge amount. According to most studies, a protein intake around 30% of calories may be optimal for weight loss. This amounts to 150 grams per day for someone on a 2000 calorie diet. You can calculate this by multiplying your calorie intake by 0.075. So for example, if you are on a 1800 calorie diet, then you should aim for uh, 1800 times 0 0.075, which is 135 grams. Increased protein is also required if you want to gain muscle and strength. Muscle is largely made of protein, and as with most tissues in the body, uh, muscles are dynamic and they're constantly being broken down and rebuilt. To gain muscle, the body must be synthesizing more muscle protein than is breaking down. In other words, there needs to be a net positive protein balance in the body, often called nitrogen balance because protein is high in nitrogen. For this reason, people who want a lot of muscle will need to eat a greater amount of protein and lift heavy things, of course. Uh, it is well documented that a high protein intake helps build muscle and strength. Also, people who want to hold on to muscle that they've already built may need to increase their protein intake when losing body fat because a high protein intake can help prevent the muscle loss that usually occurs when dieting. And when it comes to muscle mass, the studies are usually not looking at percentage of calories. Instead, we use daily grams of protein per unit of body weight either in pounds or kilos. A common recommendation for gaining muscle is 0.7 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight, or 2.2 grams of protein per kilo. For example, a 150 pound person should aim for 105 to 150 grams per day. If you're carrying a lot of body fat, then it's a good idea to use either your lean mass or your goal weight, instead of total body weight, because it's mostly your lean mass that determines the amount of protein you need. So if you're aiming to lose weight and get to 150 pounds, use that number instead of your actual weight. There's also some other situations where your protein requirements will be higher than normal. For example, if you're an elderly person at risk of osteoporosis or falls, or if you're an athlete, or if you have a very active job. What grams of protein really means? I just wanna highlight that when I say grams of protein, I mean grams of the macronutrient protein, not uh, how many grams of a high protein food you should have, like meat or eggs. For example, a large egg weighs about 45 grams, but it only contains six grams of protein. So if you wanted to get 20 grams of protein, you'd have to eat three eggs. Does protein have any negative health effects? Lastly, I wanna make it clear that a high protein diet is safe. It's been said that increased protein intake can cause osteoporosis, or kidney damage, but none of this is supported by science. Looking through the literature, there are no studies showing harmful effects of protein in the average person with healthy kidneys. In this thorough review, the authors concluded there is no significant evidence for a detrimental effect of high protein intake on kidney function in healthy persons after centuries of a high protein Western diet. A review published in 2011 concluded that there is no evidence that increased protein harms the bones either. If anything, the evidence points to a higher protein intake improving bone health not the other way around. 
The same was found in a more recent review with higher protein intake linked to better bone health, although the authors note that increased protein may only be beneficial alongside an adequate calcium intake. So there you have it. To summarize, I recommend 0.6 to one gram of protein per pound of body weight per day, depending on what your lifestyle looks like. Given that there is no evidence of harm and significant evidence of benefit, I recommend people err on the side of more protein rather than less. Thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative. And don't forget to subscribe to the Authority Nutrition YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button below the video.